Welcome to my channel, where we explore the dark and twisted world of horror stories. Whether you're a fan of classic tales or new and innovative horror, you'll find something to enjoy here. So sit back, relax, and let's get scared together. Four of us were heading to work in a rural area. We had a fascination with ghosts and decided to find a villa with a mysterious history. But there was no information about such a place. Max, a senior colleague who worked with us, offered his house. It was a house he had bought a long time ago, but he had never slept there due to a history of murder in the house. We agreed without hesitation. As we approached the house, Max asked us again if we were sure about staying there. He suggested that we hang out together instead. However, Tim, the youngest in our group, insisted on staying to experience ghostly things, so we stuck to our plan. We finally arrived at the house after passing through a cemetery and a forest. When we got there, Max once again asked if we really wanted to stay. We confirmed our decision, and he promptly left us alone in the dark house. The one-story house looked eerie in the darkness, with no streetlights nearby. As we entered, we heard three loud knocks on the door. James sent Tim to check if Max had forgotten something. Tim went to the door, but he found nothing outside. The strange knocking happened again, but this time, Tim looked agitated and pushed the door with force. However, it was empty outside. Tim seemed too eager to capture something on his camera for YouTube. Later, Tim disappeared outside, and I asked another senior, Joe, to follow him. I felt uneasy about the situation. When they returned, Joe mentioned that Tim had been acting strangely near the pond. Tim denied doing anything significant and continued to challenge the ghost to show itself. That night, nothing unusual happened, and we all went to sleep. The next morning, when we tried to wake Tim up, he wouldn't respond. Eventually, he woke up and told us to leave immediately because he didn't want to stay in the house any longer. On our way to meet clients, I asked him about what happened the previous night. He had changed from someone unafraid of ghosts to a different person. Tim said that while trying to sleep, he heard the sound of a Thai flute and drum. When he turned around to ask if anyone else heard it, he saw a shadowy figure in the room dancing in a distorted manner. Terrified, he closed his eyes and eventually fell asleep. Tim insisted it wasn't a lie. After meeting with clients, we returned home. However, we couldn't contact Tim for three days, he didn't respond to calls or messages. On the fourth night, he showed up at our workplace looking worse for wear. Tim said that after the first night in his house, he heard the same time melody while packing his things. Confused and scared, he went out to the balcony to smoke. There, he saw the same woman dancing in front of the house. He was convinced she was following him. We were all concerned for Tim's well-being. His condition deteriorated as if he hadn't slept for days. The mystery of the house and the haunting seemed to have affected him deeply. As we tried to figure out what to do, Joe suggested that he should stay in Joe's room, which was filled with holy items. Tim rushed to Joe's room to seek some respite from the haunting. Meanwhile, my girlfriend and I settled in the back room. However, even in our room, we could still hear the haunting Thai melody that Tim had mentioned. Frightened, we decided to join Tim in Joe's room. Walking there with fear in our hearts, we kept our eyes fixed on the ground, afraid of witnessing the horror Tim had experienced. As we entered Joe's room, we saw Tim trembling in the corner. I woke up Joe and asked if he had heard the strange song being played. Joe confirmed hearing it as well. We all decided to cautiously peek outside the window. When Joe slightly opened the curtain, he was met with a horrifying sight that made him cry out in shock. He quickly pulled us back into the bedroom. The four of us were left speechless and terrified as we sat there, unable to do anything until morning. The next day, we decided to seek help from an elderly monk. 
we made our way to his cloister, and on the way, Joe shared his chilling experience of seeing the woman dancing and pointing at his bedroom. Upon reaching the elderly monk, we heard a mysterious voice telling us that we didn't need to come up, they would come down to meet us. Puzzled, we waited, and soon the elderly monk appeared. He instructed all four of us to take a holy bath. After the bath, we sat down with the elderly monk, who said that he was not referring to us but to the woman following him and he inquired about our experiences, especially Tim's. Tim's condition had deteriorated drastically, and he was now scared, paranoid, and unable to speak coherently. The elderly monk asked Tim about his actions in the house. Tim confessed that he had urinated down the well next to the house. This revelation shocked us, as we hadn't expected such a disrespectful act. As we shared the terrifying events with Max, the owner of the house, he looked troubled. He asked us if we thought the murder story of the house was merely fiction. With unease, we admitted that we had underestimated the reality of the dark history. Max then began to share a haunting tale that sent shivers down our spines. He revealed that the previous year, the house had been rented by a couple with a spiritual background. The wife was a medium, and the husband engaged in finding the woman who danced for their votive offerings. One fateful day, the wife discovered her husband's infidelity. Consumed by rage and jealousy, she committed a gruesome act of revenge. She took a knife and brutally disfigured her husband's face, leaving him in agony. The husband, now disfigured and desperate to escape, ran to the dancing woman for help. But the wife caught up to them at the well next to the house. In her blind fury, she attacked the dancing woman, repeatedly stabbing her until her neck almost hung lifelessly from her body. The lifeless body was then dragged and dumped by the well then she hanged herself in that house, sealing the dancing woman's fate and tormenting her spirit for eternity. With the guidance of the elderly monk, we performed rituals to appease the vengeful spirit. Slowly but surely, Tim's condition improved, and the haunting in the house ceased. We learned a profound lesson about the importance of respecting the supernatural and the consequences of our actions. From that moment on, we vowed never to take the world of spirits lightly. The horror we experienced would forever stay with us serving as a reminder of the thin boundary between our reality and the realm of the unknown. And so, our fascination with ghosts turned into a profound respect for the mysteries that lay beyond our comprehension. My profession is that of a passenger bus driver. During each break, I have to drain the wastewater from the bus. On this particular day, I parked near a park, waiting for passengers to board. During this time, I asked my colleague Josh to handle the task of draining the water. As the day went on, we completed our duties as usual. Until today, I continued my routine of driving the shuttle and transporting passengers as usual. After dropping off the passengers, we were getting the bus ready to head back. It was during this moment that I noticed a grandmother walking straight towards my bus. She approached and explained that she had missed her bus and requested a ride. Seeing her predicament and with no other vehicles passing by, I felt sympathy for her, so I decided to allow her to board the bus. As grandma was about to board the bus, she made a casual remark, saying that he had already given her permission to get in. Her statement puzzled me, and I glanced at Josh's face, wondering who he was. Despite the confusion, I didn't dwell on it much as my main concern was grandma's well-being. During the journey, I noticed that Josh turned to look at grandma through the car seat. However, his reaction was swift as he immediately turned back around. Concerned, I asked him what had happened and what he saw. Josh replied that grandma had an unsettling and constant stare which left him feeling scared. Though I couldn't fully comprehend the situation, I trusted Josh's instincts and decided to keep a close eye on grandma. Her strange behavior added an eerie element to our journey, 
leaving us both on edge. After the unsettling journey, we finally reached the car brake area. As I finished my preparations and was about to leave the bus, Grandma suddenly spoke up, asking me to park the car. She insisted on getting off at that particular spot. Surprised by her request, I asked again to confirm if she really wanted to get off there. In response, Grandma slapped the seat and reiterated her desire to disembark. Feeling uncomfortable, I opened the door for her to alight. The whole situation was becoming increasingly bizarre, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that there was something peculiar about Grandma. Despite my reservations, I allowed her to leave the bus, and she walked away into the distance. After Grandma got off the bus, my concern for her well-being led me to follow her for a short distance. As I walked, the moonlight reflected in the car's mirror, catching my attention. I turned to look at the light and, for some reason, decided to check my own reflection in the mirror. To my horror, there was no sign of Grandma's reflection, only mine. Feeling a sense of unease, I quickly turned around and urged my colleague, Josh, to get back on the bus. I didn't share my experience with him, fearing it might scare him. As I drove away from that spot, I realized that Grandma had mysteriously vanished. This perplexed me even more, making me doubt whether Grandma was actually a person at all. Despite my suspicions, I kept my thoughts to myself, not wanting to alarm Josh. However, a few days later, Josh confided in me, revealing that he had been haunted by dreams of Grandma ever since she boarded the bus. This revelation only deepened the mystery surrounding the strange encounter with Grandma. The whole experience left me on edge, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that something otherworldly had occurred. I knew that there was more to this strange encounter than I could understand, and I couldn't help but wonder if there was a deeper meaning or significance to it all. As time went on, I tried my best to put the strange encounter with Grandma behind me. I initially avoided parking the bus where I had met her, the years passed, the memory faded, and I eventually forgot about the whole incident. However, fate seemed to have other plans. One day, against all odds, I ended up parking the bus in the very spot where I had encountered Grandma. As my friend Josh went to dispose of the garbage, I waited on the bus. After about 20 minutes had passed, I grew concerned about his delay and decided to go look for him. Armed with a flashlight, I followed a small side entrance and soon stumbled upon a surreal sight. There was Josh, sitting on the grass, eating offerings just like he had described Grandma doing in his dreams. Shocked and bewildered, I called out to him, demanding an explanation for his strange behavior. Upon hearing my voice, Josh turned to look at me but seemed frightened and attempted to flee deeper into the forest. His reaction only added to my confusion and fear, and I felt a sense of dread creeping over me. Something strange was undoubtedly happening, and I had a sinking feeling that the inexplicable events from the past were resurfacing chillingly. In the forest, I discovered an abandoned house and rushed after Josh as he disappeared inside. However, something was terribly off. When I entered the house, I realized that Josh was not himself. Instead, he had become the image of the creepy grandmother we had encountered a year ago. Ignoring my fear, I cautiously proceeded, and my attention was drawn to a zinc sheet on the floor that covered a pond. I trod carefully, wary of slipping, when suddenly the zinc sheet bounced off the floor, revealing the wet and lifeless body of the same grandmother I had allowed into my bus a year ago. Shocked and terrified, I instinctively stepped back. To my horror, the grandmother turned around and chuckled eerily before entering the abandoned house. Determined to help Josh, I mustered up the courage and prepared to run toward him. However, I was tripped by something falling from the roof. It turned out to be an enormous black dog. I instantly sensed that this was no ordinary canine. Knowing that Josh needed my help, I decided to face my fears and ran towards the dog with my eyes shut tight. Surprisingly, 
when I opened my eyes, the big black dog had disappeared. In my panic state, I accidentally bumped into a door, causing it to swing open due to the old and fragile condition of the house. I fell to the ground, trembling with fear, but managed to gather myself and light up the area with my flashlight to look for Josh. To my utter shock, I found Josh in a distressing situation, about to use a rope to tie around his neck. Reacting instinctively, I rushed to his aid and performed a flying kick to prevent him from harming himself. Thankfully, my intervention snapped him back to reality, and he shouted that he was alright. Still shaken, I grabbed Josh's hand and led him to the back of the house, desperate to escape the unsettling and sinister atmosphere. As we rushed out, I realized I had taken the wrong route, ending up in a rubber plantation. Despite my fear, I continued running, seeking safety from whatever malevolent force seemed to be haunting us. As exhaustion overcame me, I slowed down and sought refuge under a rubber tree. Gathering my strength, I regained consciousness and checked on Josh. To my horror, he was bleeding from the impact of my kick, having hit his head on the ground during the ordeal. Guilt-ridden, I attended to his injuries, trying my best to soothe him while trying to figure out a way to escape this nightmarish situation. In our desperate attempt to escape the rubber forest, we decided to listen to the sound of cars, hoping it would lead us to safety. After a while, we heard the screeching of brakes, followed by a cry for help. A woman was calling out, stating that her car had crashed and her child was trapped inside. Driven by the urgency of the situation, Josh and I ran in the direction of the woman's voice. We found the car, which had toppled over and was sinking. Inside, a young boy was desperately knocking on the window, unable to open the door. We tried to open the door but couldn't, so I grabbed a stone and shattered the window to rescue the boy. Thankfully, we managed to get him out safely. Soon after, the rescue team arrived and questioned me about what had happened and how many people were in the car. I had no information to give them as I had run out of the inner forest in a state of panic. I then asked the nurses to tend to Josh's head wound, and they quickly attended to him. As the salvage team continued their efforts, they made a grim discovery, another body was found inside the car. The whole situation was heartbreaking and surreal. The discovery of the woman's body in the car, the same person who had called for help, sent shivers down my spine. It felt like the events of the past were haunting us, and I couldn't stay there any longer. Josh and I took some time to sit and reflect on the inexplicable occurrences that had befallen us. The following day, I decided to revisit the location where I had encountered the creepy grandmother. I sought answers from the locals about the abandoned house, hoping to uncover the truth behind the strange events. A kind neighbor guided me to the accident site, which had a court in front of the abandoned house. The story that unfolded was deeply unsettling. The house once belonged to an aunt who lived with her gambling child. The child, in desperate need of money, secretly mortgaged the house. When the grandmother found out, she was devastated, as the house was her only possession. Fearing that someone might take it away, she chose to end her life in that very house and left a letter, warning against anyone attempting to claim her property, threatening them with eternal repercussions. The realization struck me, the abandoned house, the eerie encounter with the grandmother, and the tragic accident were all intertwined in a haunting tale of loss and despair. Moreover, I noticed that the court where the accident had taken place was the same spot where Josh had disposed of the wastewater from the bus, adding an eerie and inexplicable connection to the events that had unfolded. The experiences I had encountered during those harrowing days left me with a lingering sense of the supernatural and the inexplicable. To this day, I can't fully comprehend what had transpired, but the memories of those haunting events will forever stay with me. As I returned home after a long time away, 
I was looking forward to finally resting. It was a quiet night, and the only sound was the occasional chirping of crickets outside. I settled in, had a meal, and took a soothing shower before getting ready for bed. In the middle of the night, my slumber was interrupted by the sound of a woman sobbing. Startled, I got up and looked out the window, only to find a girl named Emma standing there. She lived across from my house. I called out to her, trying to understand what was wrong, but she didn't respond. Concerned about her well-being, I hurried downstairs to talk to her in person. When I reached her, I asked why she was crying outside. Emma explained that she had a fight with her boyfriend and ran away to her parents' place. I asked why she didn't go inside her parents' house, and she revealed her fear of upsetting them and her boyfriend who might follow. She didn't want to cause any trouble, so I invited her into my home. Once in my room, Emma sat on the bed, still inconsolable. I attempted to comfort her, but she continued to weep. Deciding to give her some space, I turned off the light so her boyfriend wouldn't notice her presence. As I sat near the window, I noticed Emma's boyfriend arriving in a car and angrily calling her out. Oddly, no one else seemed to react to the commotion outside. I wondered why my neighbors didn't come out to see what was happening. Emma's boyfriend kept shouting for a long time, and it became evident that something serious was going on. Emma's parents finally appeared at the door, engaging in a heated discussion with the boyfriend about Emma supposedly cheating on him. As the argument intensified, he pulled out a gun and threatened to shoot her father if she didn't come out immediately. As Emma's boyfriend finished speaking, I turned my attention back to Emma, who was still sitting on the bed, weeping uncontrollably. However, a strange sensation gripped me when I heard the sound of the door opening. I couldn't believe my eyes as I saw another Emma rushing out of the house. I was frozen in disbelief, questioning who the person sitting on the bed with me was. Confused and terrified, I tried to make sense of the situation. It was as if there were two identical versions of Emma. My mind raced with all sorts of possibilities, but none of them seemed rational or logical. The Emma who had just rushed out looked exactly like the one on the bed, and yet, there they were, two seemingly identical individuals. The one who had fled appeared panicked, with tears streaming down her face, just like the one sitting beside me. I couldn't comprehend what was happening. Was this some sort of illusion, or was there a sinister force at play? My heart pounded, and a shiver ran down my spine. I struggled to find an explanation that would make sense of the inexplicable. In that heart-stopping moment, my mind felt foggy, but my eyes remained fixated on the chilling scene unfolding before me. Emma rushed to her boyfriend, trying to wipe his hand and seemingly pleading with him. My heart pounded as I sensed danger looming. In the blink of an eye, the gun fired, sending a deafening echo through the night. A gunshot rang out, and my senses were overwhelmed by the sheer terror of the situation. Emma's parents collapsed to the ground, lifeless, as their daughter crumpled beside them. I was paralyzed, unable to intervene or escape from the nightmarish reality playing out before me. The dark figure of Emma's boyfriend turned towards me, his eyes filled with desperation and despair. Before I could process what was happening, he pointed the gun at his own head and pulled the trigger. Everything turned dark, and when I regained consciousness, I found myself in the hospital with a broken leg, head injuries, and bruises all over my body. The shock of witnessing such a traumatic event left me speechless. Upon my return home, I learned from my mother what had transpired. She found me unconscious outside the house, covered in blood and rushed me to the hospital. I realized that I must have fallen out of the window while witnessing the horrifying events unfolding across the street. However, the true horror awaited me when my mother revealed that Emma's sister had died two months ago. Her boyfriend had shot her entire family before shooting himself. The chilling realization hit me hard, 
as I now understood that what I had witnessed that night had actually happened in its entirety. The haunting question lingered in my mind, was Emma's spirit trying to warn me about the danger lurking in the house across the street, or was it a twisted illusion caused by the shock of the tragedy? As I tried to recover from the physical and emotional trauma, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story than met the eye, leaving me haunted by the events of that fateful night. Working part-time at a three-story grocery store, I found myself alone on the second floor, responsible for packing and storage. One day, feeling exhausted, I dozed off secretly during my shift. Startled awake, I checked the time, it was 7 p.m. In a hurry, I resumed my work, but then something strange happened. I heard eerie laughter echoing around me, even though I knew no one else was on the second floor. Curiosity got the better of me, and I followed the laughter's source. It led me to a corner where a woman sat with her back turned, rocking back and forth, and laughing manically. Fear gripped me, worried she might report me to the owner for slacking off. So I hurried back to my work area, but the laughter persisted. As I sat working, the laughter grew louder and seemed to be approaching. I glanced to my right and noticed the same woman in the same position, laughing incessantly. My instincts told me she wasn't a real person, and I frantically looked for the elevator to escape. The elevator seemed to take forever to reach my floor, and I worried the ghostly woman might catch up with me. Frightened by the ghostly laughter and feeling the urgency to escape, I blinked my eyes rapidly and rushed to press the elevator button. As I waited anxiously, the haunting laughter echoed in my ears, making my heart race. Finally, the elevator approached, and I extended my hand to reach for the doors. With a sense of relief, the elevator doors quickly opened, but to my dismay, it didn't stop on the second floor as expected. Instead, it hovered about a foot above the floor, leaving me in a precarious position. The sudden drop caused me to lose balance, and my head nearly hit the floor. Panic washed over me as I struggled to stay on my feet. But as I still closed my eyes and pressed the elevator button to go down, I felt the elevator descending towards the first floor, about to leave the second floor behind. My curiosity got the better of me, and I squinted my eyes toward the elevator. To my horror, I saw a pale woman lying on the second floor, staring at me intently, her face just inches away from mine. I was paralyzed with fear and stood trembling in the lift. Meanwhile, the staff on the first floor heard the sound of my fall, and they rushed to the elevator to see what was going on. The doors finally opened, and they found me in a state of shock. They helped me out and asked what had happened, but I could barely find the words to explain my terrifying encounter with the ghostly woman. My heart was pounding, and I knew I had to tell the store owner about this eerie experience. I mustered the courage to recount the whole incident to the owner, who listened attentively. To my surprise, the owner seemed unfazed by my story and asked if I had ever seen a picture of her sister. With a sense of deja vu, I nodded, remembering the photo from earlier. The owner then revealed that her sister had passed away four years ago and had a habit of sitting in that exact spot on the second floor, rocking and laughing to herself. She used to find comfort in overseeing the store, and even in death, her spirit seemed to linger, still watching over her beloved shop. The store owner shared a few more ghostly tales from the building's history and it became apparent that I was not the first to experience supernatural occurrences there. It was a place where the line between the living and the dead seemed to blur, and mysteries loomed in the shadows. After that incident, I couldn't bring myself to continue working at the grocery store. The thought of encountering the ghostly woman again was too much to bear. I bid farewell to my part-time job and found work elsewhere, far away from that haunted place. But even now, the memories of that chilling encounter still haunt me. I wonder if the ghostly presence is still there, 
laughing and rocking in the corner of the second floor. It taught me a valuable lesson, to always be respectful and mindful of the unseen forces that may surround us. As for the grocery store, it remains a place of eerie fascination and spine-tingling curiosity for those who dare to step onto the haunted second floor. I attended a festival near my house in the province. After the trip, I got back home around 10 p.m., took a shower, and prepared for bed. As I lay down to sleep, I heard the sound of motorcycles in the distance. Suddenly, there was a loud crash, but the noise went silent. Thinking it was just motorcycles passing by, I couldn't see anything and decided to go back to sleep since it was very late at night. The next morning, I was awakened by the sound of a loud ambulance. Looking out of the window, I saw a crowd of onlookers below, and an ambulance parked about 10 meters away from my house. I woke up my wife, and we went down together to see what was happening. There, we saw a soil shoveling machine with a figure impaled through its roof on an iron rod. The floor was covered in blood, and this sight caused my girlfriend to immediately faint. Following the incident, the police arrived and conducted an investigation. They discovered that the man had been drunk and crashed into a car parked in front of my house. They removed the dead body, but the car was too damaged to be taken away. So, the police had no choice but to leave the broken car in that area. The eerie presence of the damaged car added to the unsettling atmosphere surrounding my home. Three days later, during the night, I heard the familiar sound of motorcycles again. This time, I couldn't sleep, so I got up and opened the window to see what was happening. I saw one of the motorcycles had fallen, and a body was impaled on the iron platform nearby. To my horror, the man seemed to be moving, trying to free himself from the iron rod and pushing the motorcycle into the darkness. Startled and frightened, I told my girlfriend that I had been tricked by a ghost. However, she didn't believe me and went back to sleep while I huddled under the covers until morning. The experience left me shaken and I couldn't shake off the feeling that something supernatural was at play. The next day, I shared the eerie story with my neighbors. Strangely enough, they had heard similar things and began exchanging their own terrifying tales. The atmosphere in the neighborhood was filled with fear and uncertainty. That night, I still couldn't sleep, and then I heard a knock on the door. I called out who is that, and she replies it's me. Our nephew I asked her why she couldn't sleep, and she replied that she couldn't because she heard a rattling sound outside the house that didn't stop. I felt a chill down my spine but mustered up the courage to check. As I looked outside, there was no one to be seen. I reassured my nephew that there was nothing to worry about and took her back to bed. After that restless night, I couldn't recall when I fell asleep. Once again, I was startled awake by the sound of the motorcycle. I rushed to see what was happening, desperately wanting to know what was going on. As soon as I saw the scene outside, I quickly retreated under the safety of my blankets, frightened by what I witnessed. The next day, I planned to share the strange events with my neighbors, but to my surprise, no one was around. As I stood outside, a car drove past, and my neighbor called out to me saying they couldn't bear the constant noise of the motorcycle at night anymore. They had rented a bedroom outside to escape the haunting sounds. The situation was becoming increasingly bizarre, and I felt a growing sense of dread. The fear and unease in the neighborhood were palpable, and I couldn't help but wonder what was causing these strange occurrences. I was taken aback by the neighbor's decision to sleep outside, as I never expected anyone to be so fearful. The strange events had clearly become too much for them to bear. Tonight, at the same time as before, I woke up my girlfriend so we could investigate together. As she woke up, we heard the motorcycle sound again. But this time, when the man tried to free himself from the iron rod, he walked in front of our house. 
We were utterly bewildered as he looked up at our window, seemingly aware of our presence. After that eerie encounter, we huddled together and tried to sleep, eagerly waiting for the morning to come. The relentless cycle of unsettling events had left us on edge, and we couldn't find any logical explanation for what was happening. The fear and confusion in our minds were growing. We couldn't bear it anymore, tomorrow we should leave this house immediately. The next morning, I wasted no time packing up my girlfriend and nephew's belongings, determined to rent a bedroom outside to escape the haunting occurrences. As I was about to leave, a mechanic arrived to fix the car and finally removed it from the front of the house. Seeing this, I thought it might be a good sign, and I discussed with my girlfriend the idea of trying to sleep at home for one more night to see if things improved. That night, we cautiously settled back into our home, hoping for a peaceful night's sleep. Surprisingly, the sound of the haunting motorcycle was nowhere to be heard. The silence was both a relief and a mystery. Had the departure of the car somehow put an end to the unsettling events? As we lay in bed, cautiously waiting for any sign of the ghostly presence, we couldn't help but wonder if we had finally escaped the grasp of the supernatural. Yet, in the back of our minds, the fear lingered, uncertain if this respite would last. The strange events had left us on edge, and the lingering uncertainty made it difficult to fully let our guard down. For now, the nightmare had seemingly ended, and we hoped that the peace would continue. However, the memory of those terrifying nights would forever haunt our thoughts, reminding us of the inexplicable and chilling events that had unfolded near our home. Thank you, awesome audience, for tuning in. Your support and enthusiasm mean the world to us. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our latest content. Until next time, keep spreading positivity and embracing creativity. Stay amazing and we'll see you soon.